All right, so now let's use those tools that we've just done to do some fun stuff here. Woohoo! Okay? Now, here's a clue. If you see squares, that's going to be a clue that we're going to need to use some of these guys right here, okay? Now, looking at it, I don't really see anything going on here. But what do you notice on the left that they both have in common? Could you factor out a secant squared? Sure, let's try it. I'm going to go through and say, I notice that they both have a secant squared, so I'm going to factor that out. When I take out the secant squared, I get 1 minus cosine squared of theta. Now, this is when I'm going to turn over to my list of weapons over here and say, is there any weapon I could use here to slay this trig identity? What do you guys think? Is there anything out there you recognize from here? What is it? Well, so the one that's standing out to me, I could replace tangent with secant squared minus 1, but that doesn't seem to match up quite the same. The one that's standing out to me is 1 minus cosine squared. Looking up at the blue ones, what is 1 minus cosine squared equal to? I'm going to put a note. 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared of theta. So I'm going to replace that with sine squared of theta. Okay. So I get secant squared of theta times sine squared of theta is equal to tangent squared of theta. This is good because now, here I had two terms is equal to 1. I used this Pythagorean trig identity to make it so now it's just one term is equal to one term. Now that we have it, just one term is equal to one term, what that means is if we just go back to our old strategy of just getting it into terms of sine and cosine, usually that will work. Okay? So let's actually get some help here from Kara. Kara, I'm going to have you help me get this back into terms of sine and cosine. How can I write secant in terms of sine and cosine? And we're going to square it since it's squared. But okay, keep going. Great job. So now I'm just going to say, hey, let's multiply those straight across. I get sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta is equal to sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta. Is that a true statement? Yes, it is. Woohoo! So then I have proven the validity, proven this identity. Now, if I'm grading this, do I just want you to jump from here to here? No, I'm wanting to see this whole process here, okay? Your work is how you get credit. So I need to look at it. I've had people before where they start with this and they put dot, 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 one equals one. And I'm like, oh, you're funny, but you don't get any points. All right, cool, does that make sense? This didn't ask for the domain of validity, but if it did, what do you notice is in the denominator? Cosine. Cosine, so then I would say, theta cannot equal odd multiples pi halves. Done, domain of validity, it was kind of hard to get the hang of it at the beginning, but hopefully at this point, you're like, okay, that's easy stuff. Let's look at these ones right here. Um, you guys, can do seven. I'm going to have you do that on your own. Let's just jump to number eight. All right. Do you see any squares on number eight? So I'm not really going to be able to use any of these weapons. So maybe what could I do? What's our other strategy if we can't use Pythagoreans? Yeah, let's get in terms of sine and cosine. So I'm going to send this to someone who's here. How about Allie? How do you write cosecant? Uh, one over sine. Good job. And sine? It's good. You like sine. Uh, over here, how do we write cotangent? Um, 
And what about cosine is just plain old cosine, right? Okay, well now, here I have two terms, and I only have one. So maybe I could combine those, but what's the rule with adding fractions? Have the same denominator, right? So right now, sine is over 1, so what am I going to need to do to that? I'm going to need to give it a sign. But if I give it a sign in the bottom, what else does that mean? Okay, so then let's, let's look at that. So here I'm going to have 1 over sine of theta minus sine squared of theta over sine of theta. And here on the right side, let's combine the cosine times cosine. That just becomes cosine squared of theta over sine of theta. Are you following me so far? Okay, so on the left side, can we combine those now? They have the same denominator, so let's write it as one fraction. I'm going to have 1 minus sine squared of theta over sine of theta. This is equal to cosine squared of theta over sine of theta. So close, does anyone actually see what we're going to do next. Allie's raising her hand in a stretching way so she can like back out if she wants. Okay, what do you think, Allie? Right here, one minus sine squared is cosine. And if I replace this with cosine, do they match? Woohoo! Now I'm going to put a little note to the side here and say, just in case someone's like, where'd you get that? I'm going to put, hey, remember that cosine squared of theta is one minus sine squared of theta. So I'm going to replace this whole thing right there with cosine squared of theta. So this is cosine squared of theta over sine of theta is equal to cosine squared of theta over sine of theta. Is that a true statement? Then we can go All right, now some of you might be like, well, I would have thought to do that. Well, sometimes doing these multiple times, you get different strategies. But then I'd say, well, there's other ways you could have done this. You could have done different approaches and still gotten the same, a true statement, okay? And that's okay. By the way, what would the domain of validity be on this one? Yeah, the, the only denominator is sine, so I'm actually going to just add a quick note here that theta cannot equal n pi, where n is any integer, okay? All right. I want you guys to see if you can do number seven on your own. I think it's actually pretty easy. So do that, give the domain of validity. Angelina, did you get it to work out? <laughs> well, you tell me what you've done so far. Um, so I started by getting the answer to minus cosine. Perfect. So cosine is going to be sine over cosine. I can see it. Oh, cosine over sine. And then um, cos theta is 1 over sine. And then cosine is sine. Then if we just multiply those, cosine over sine is cosine over sine. True statement, it works. Were you guys able to do that on your own? 
Perfect. Okay, now what about the domain of validity? What's the only thing in the denominator? So what does that mean, theta cannot be? Awesome. Okay, so now on the back of Sonic is your assignment. There's 18 trig identities, okay? It says verify, which means get the left side to look like the right side. And then you're going to um, give the domain of validity for them. Now, you're not going to have enough space to do this right here, okay? So don't try to cram it on here. Do a separate paper. And um, what we're going to do on Friday is do a little bit more practice with these from home, okay? All right. Thanks, guys. You are awesome. If you'll clean up, then I will see you virtually on Friday and in person on Tuesday.